Do you really know just how heavy 24 hours of metal music really is? About the weight of your mobile phone. Download our free andrewhogue.com iPhone and Android apps now. That way, you'll never be far away from us. This is andrewhogue.com, still Australia's only 24-7 metal radio station. And the last time we spoke to this great man, they were literally days away from making their way to Australia for the only exclusive shows as part of the Download Festival in March of 2020. I don't think any of us knew what the hell was going to happen for the entire world for the following two-plus years. So we have JP from Clutch on the line to... Uh, talk about the last couple of years and also reflect on uh, how the band sort of coped through that time and to talk about the brand new album that is uh, set for release very shortly. It is called Sunrise on Slaughter Beach. It's the band's 13th studio album. So it's been crazy time to last uh, several years for all, but great to have some new clutch music. Welcome back to uh, the station again, JP. Hey there. Very glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Likewise. And as I mentioned, it was great to uh, connect with you before heading to Australia for download, and then we were hoping to connect at the festival and see the band play live, which I've seen many, many times. And then, yeah, of course, we had no idea what the entire world was going to be put into. So I guess our big question is how were, you know, how did the Clutch Camp cope during that time? Because I know you did a lot of studio live streaming performances, which I thought were great. I, I, I enjoyed most of the ones I got a chance to see. But when that happened, because Clutch, Clutch is a live band, how did you guys cope with the whole you're going to be home for two years well yeah it was it was a, it was tough and, and i think you're right we we are very much a live band and so the idea that we would not be able to play shows was uh terrifying mm. pretty much so you know we were fortunate enough though that that very early on in the pandemic um our booking agent here in the states had uh he he had the idea of trying to do a, a stream show you know and and charging a price for it and and you know at that point we were just thrilled just to just to play anywhere and so this idea that that we might be able to actually do a, a gig right from where we where we record you know right from our studio uh we rehearse there we we store all the gear there it's sort of a clutch headquarters we call it the doom saloon yeah you know, the idea that we could actually do a show out of out of that Doom Saloon was exciting to us. And so we just gave it a shot. And we the first one was literally just Neil's laptop in the corner of the room. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we, we invested in, you know, a few lights that we got off of Amazon, I think, and you know, and then off we were. And that that was that, that was the first of a series and it certainly kept us sane. It uh I think it was good for the band that it, that it required us to dig. You know, we really made it a point not to repeat any of the songs from the previous streams. And we did four streams in total. Um, we were able to dig back into the old catalog in ways that I think we probably wouldn't have if we had been on tour on a regular sort of record cycle. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it was crap in a way, but, you know, there were some good things that came from it. Yeah, well, like I said, I did get a chance to see uh, most of the streams and, you know, I remember seeing the first one and, and Neil sort of setting up the laptop and, and stuff like that. It was actually, like I said, it was different, but also exciting because it was just, wow, we're just in this situation here. we got to make the most of it, but it was also a different experience at the same time. I know a lot of bands didn't want to do that approach. Some did, but it didn't always pan out the way it should have. But for me, you know, just seeing Clutch and, of course, as you mentioned, changing the set list was uh Really, really cool as well. But um, again, being able to get back out and play live music, how did that feel once you've sort of, you know, because you've just wrapped up a, a recent tour, uh, the first time sort of getting back out on the uh, the horse, so to speak, how did that feel for, uh, you know, the band just to get back out and yeah. hear the PA and, and crowds cheering? It, it was amazing. You know, I, uh, it, it was like church, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't really go to church, but... <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, it it was an amazing feeling. It 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 it, it felt as if, um, you know, we were appreciative, and and uh, certainly I, I feel like the crowd was appreciative. The folks who worked at the gig were appreciative. Um, you know, the, the the whole thing was was just really positive all the way around. And fortunately, I, I feel like that that feeling has has stuck around. You know, we just wrapped up 
pretty extensive uh, European tour where we did a lot of festivals playing. Um, you know, we did we did Wacken and uh, Puckle Pop, and and then we did some 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 festivals that were not so so metal. They were sort of just family vibe kind of festivals, and that and that was cool. You you can tell that that people are just they're they're just they're really appreciative of, of what's happening, and and so the the feeling is very positive. Now we're back to talk about, the, of course, the, uh, the the thirteenth studio album, Sunrise on Slaughter Beach. Now, I've written here, I've read here that it says it's probably the longest gap between albums. Now it sounds like it wasn't done on purpose, purely because some bands have held out on these releases until this whole thing was going to settle. Uh, I believe is that the reason why the band took a while to uh, put this record out due to that uncertainty. Well, you know, we we started writing almost immediately after the the pandemic happened. Um, so we had the intention of recording, and and you know, I, I have a whole year's worth almost of recordings that we did demos that that we didn't even really use, and and I I think it was because we realized that that this, there wasn't an end to this thing that was that was happening, and I don't think we wanted to document music. Um, that didn't have at least uh, some some outlook that we might be able to play it on stage. So so we wrote for another year even after that. Um, what you hear on Slaughter Beach is is a, this is a culmination of ideas that happened uh, in a very different way than than previous records, and that has a lot to do with the the fact that we were not afforded the opportunity to play these songs live, and so for that reason, I think we we experimented more. I think we took some chances and I think we recorded something that, that would have sounded very different had we been able to take the ideas and actually play them on stage. I, I, I think we would have made some different choices, uh, not necessarily ones for the better though. Let's talk a bit about the track listing because the band's sort of renowned for long song, not long songs as in, you know, epic 10 minute prog things like that but we're talking more about the amount of songs on the record and this album money has nine tracks i just want to confirm that's 100 percent because that's what we were sent um that's what i'm seeing anyway on the uh the download link that we yep. got so what was the reason to sort of just pen nine songs instead of the standard sort of 12 14 15 that clutch uh, renowned for on uh previous albums well i I, th I think we wanted to make something that that was that was folks could listen to it in one listen um it's clear that that people's attention spans have have shortened mm -hmm. and the, my, my myself included you know yeah. <laughs> so so we, we wanted to distill these ideas down to really the the things that were going to be not only resonate with 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 the rest of the record but but things that would things that would would make people take another look at, at what what they think clutch might be and it wasn't an intentional effort it, it was something that happened really just naturally in the studio and, and it was it was mostly because we were able to, to 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 experiment i think more than we had in in previous recordings one thing i love about clutch i guess at least for me as a longtime fan that i don't see a use by date on you guys at all musically and just for a career i mean some bands sort of go for broke push it after eight albums and say you know we're burned out but i don't feel that on any of the music that clutch put out or anything to sort of you know we got to take things to the next level i mean you're so self-contained in just how you run your business having your own label and the fan base is just incredibly loyal what's your view on my sort of uh thoughts on clutch's longevity and you know is there a retirement plan in the future uh no there is no retirement plan in the future we're we're going to do this for as long as we can possibly do it um we still enjoy it you know we we as i said before we just wrapped up uh, a very extensive european tour probably the longest we've done over there and you know it, it was certainly difficult to do and it was and it was tiring but it was also you know it was probably one of the most exciting things that i'll ever do for the for, for my entire life it was it was amazing it was it was the experience of a lifetime and i think we all feel like that you know this this opportunity to play music is such a special thing and i, I think we all appreciate it more um and and so we're just going to keep doing this thing for as long as we can we we really do enjoy 
enjoy I, I enjoy making music with these guys. It's it's uh, it's a very special thing. And I think, as we mentioned, just you know, this this dreaded pandemic has kind of had either a, a negative effect on people uh, emotionally or a positive one in the sense of learning to be more grateful for what you have purely because no one saw this coming, at least if you deep dive into the history. Some people were saying that, yes, this was bound to happen, but for most people who are just carrying on with their daily lives, loving what they do and enjoying their life, didn't really foresee this at all. So, you know, like I said, it's affected a lot of people mentally uh, in so many areas of their lives and others have just gone, man, this has been one of the greatest things that's happened to me. I've changed jobs or, you know, I... uh, I learned a few things about myself because, again, it, it really tested our ability to understand uncertainty, which is a massive human need that we all so rely on. Uh, and from what you just said, it sounds like you know, the members of Clutch really ran with that approach and just said enjoying uh, what you do because, like I said, a lot of bands crumbled during this time, businesses as well, because you know couldn't keep things afloat. Uh, on many levels, financially and, and, and mentally as well. Uh, what else is, is, you know, other lessons that you learn about yourself during this, the last couple of years, aside from, you know, the love of playing music? Well, I, I actually started taking drum lessons during the pandemic. And uh, I, I took lessons from a drum teacher called Dom Famularo. Oh, yeah, and he's the man. If there are drummers out there, yeah. uh, you should check him out. He's 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 an amazing person. Uh, he's an inspiring guy, and he knows more about how to play drums, I think, than anybody I've I've ever met. And and by that I mean uh, how how to get your your um, your hands to do what your brain wants them to do and it's just all about it's about technique and it's about staying relaxed and i i studied with him over the course of the pandemic um and i i studied in a way that i probably would not have been able to do had i been out there doing gigs yeah i i really i I really took another look at at just just how i play the drums and and what it what it means to hit the snare drum and what it means to to uh play a ride cymbal um, and, and so I'm, I'm thankful and grateful for the opportunity to do that. And so, um, yeah, if, if any drummers out there, check, you know, check out Dom Famulero. He's an inspiring guy and super knowledgeable. And super funny as well. I've seen him do a few drum clinics when he's come to Australia, the ultimate drummer's day and whatnot. And, uh, always heavily entertaining. Just, you know, he's, it seems to be one of the happiest drummers I've ever watched. Just always laughing and just you know, getting into his, his groove and what he does. So it really resonates in, uh, in in what he does when he puts himself out there on stage. No doubt about it. it and and I remember those mornings well, you know, it, we would we were in the very middle of the pandemic, you know, which, which, you know, could have been the darkest of times. And I remember, you know, getting on the Zoom with him at, you know, 9 a.m. And there he would be smiling and inspiring. And uh, so he he uh, he really helped me get through it. I, I'm very fortunate that I was able to spend some some lessons with him. He's he's an amazing guy. And you've used some of those things, just I guess on 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 the recording of the latest album, or did it more happen more for yeah. you when you played live? A- absolutely. You know that uh, I I felt the difference from the very first lessons that I that I took with Dom, and I I I started uh, his routine of playing through stick control. And just really listening and watching how my my hands work. How 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 do I hit the drum? What does it look like? And and making sure that, it, that there's no tension in the playing whatsoever. And I think that that has has certainly translated to my the live show for sure. I I just I get off stage feeling more relaxed, um, but also I I feel as though I've been able to play everything that that I wanted to play, and um, and that just comes from you know, those lessons and taking the time that, that I, I wouldn't have been able to do that had I been on the road with Clutch. Now, as a pro- professional musician, I mean, what prompted you to say, you know, what, I wouldn't mind taking some lessons because some bands and musicians are like, well, you know, I've been doing this 20, 30 years. I don't, I've got my craft. I know what I'm doing and who needs lessons? This is what I do now. This is my my daily thing. But what sort of prompted you to say, you know what, I, I, I just, I've got to step it up. I've got to, I've got to continue to learn and, and grow because some people sort of hit that wall and they plateau and they kind of just stay as is. But what was it for you that made you just go, yeah, I got to improve. 
Well, I've, I've always been curious about the instrument. And so for me, taking lessons wasn't a new thing. I've, I've, I've taken, uh, taken lessons really since the, the very earliest days of, of, of my playing. I, I think the, the difference was that when I was in my twenties, I, I learned how to practice. Um, and prior to that, I would take a lesson and listen to whatever the drum teacher told me. Um, and he had good information to share with me, but I, but I was sort of, I just sort of thought, okay, well, my lesson's over. I don't have to think about that shit anymore. Let me, uh, let me get back to playing along with my Chrome Mags record. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until my twenties where I, I had a drum teacher called, uh, Walter Saab. And he was, he was uh, a very influential drummer here in the, in the Washington DC metro area. And it wasn't until I, I studied with him that I learned how to practice. And then you know, after that, it's, it's been a lifelong pursuit. I'm still curious about the instrument. Um, I, I, I still buy drum books. I still spend time practicing. I have a metronome. I have a practice log, you know, I've got, I've got about eight drum books right here in front of me right now. Uh, I, I enjoy it. I, I, I can remember doing a, uh, an interview one time with, uh, with a, a German journalist and he, and he said to me, uh, he says, I, I understand that you spend many hours every day practicing. Uh, isn't that boring for you? And my response was that only if you think that practice is boring. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy spending time with the instrument, listening to the instrument, uh, listening to music, and, and then trying to, and try, trying to make what I do in clutch even better. And it happens only incrementally, you know, it's, it, we're talking about, you know, just tiny bits of a percentage, but every hour that you put in on the drums pays off when you get up on the bandstand. And they always say you're only as good as the drummer that's in your band. I, I try to be the best drummer I can. Awesome. Well, it's been a blast to reconnect with you, JP. And I just want to mention any word on a clutch return tour, because as we mentioned about the only Australian shows were booked for the Download Festival. And then obviously two years just went to crap. Uh, and you're about to head off on a, another US tour and European tour by the end of the year. So we're still getting a little bit of a, a trickle of bands coming back to Australia. It wasn't kind of like the tsunami that we got used to for the last eight years. But how? Uh, how what are the plans for uh, Klutz to return to Australia? Because you've been here many times. We love having you here. You've got a great fan base. And we want to hear these new tracks live. What's, what's 2023 looking like? We're, we're putting that together now. I very much hope that we can get to Australia. We, we enjoy playing for you guys. And uh, I, I think there are very few places in the world that appreciate rock and roll the way that Australians do. Um, I, I remember our, our very first gigs there and, and being welcomed. So Australia has a very special place in our hearts. I'm awesome. hoping we can get there next year. Yeah, we hope so too. I can't wait to hear these new tracks alive. The new album's called Sunset. Oh, sorry, Sunrise on Slaughter Beach. We've been chatting with JP from Clutch. Now, we can get you to choose your favourite song from that album, and even as a tradition, we get you to choose, I reckon, two songs from the back catalogue just because it's so extensive and amazing. Um, one is just not enough. So uh, one song for the new album and two from the back catalogue. Okay. So from the new album, let's let's go with Mountain of Bone. Um, Mountain of Bone ended up being one of my favourite songs, uh, the, the thing with that song for me is that when we went into the studio, it was, it was really a, a big question mark. I, I didn't really understand what I wanted to play at that, at that point. Um, once we got into the studio, I was able to dig into what Neil's lyrics were. And I had a little kind of a, a idea of how to play it. Um, I will say that one of my references for that song, uh, was the obsessed the obsessed is a song is a band from from maryland and uh i kind of i kind of all of a sudden thought that the, the riff kind of reminded me of an obsessed riff so uh let's check out mountain of bone and two songs from the back catalog of any record that you love okay uh let, let's go for um let's go for earth rocker off of earth rocker that earth rocker is a song that we've been playing in the set list for quite some time uh, I think on just on this last trip to Europe, uh, I I sort of I I have a new appreciation for that tune, and I very much enjoy playing it. And another track, final one. Yeah, one more. Let's go for um, let's go for Minotaur, off of Strange Cousins from the West. Awesome. 
Let's line that up now. Thanks for chatting with us, JP. This is, uh, of course, andrewhug.com. I, I very much enjoyed talking with you tonight. Thank you. Likewise. And, uh, yeah, let's hope 2023 we uh, get to see you get back out there and uh, rock, and I'll, uh, I'll check out the new drum skills. Yeah, I love it. Awesome. Right. Look after Thank yourself. You. All right, man. Be Take well. care. Have a good show. And we're going to hear some clutch.